I've been waiting to get my hands on the beating GTA 5 since its announcement last October, and it's finally here. Hey, this is Jupiter, and you're watching Tech Bars. Let's get started with today's review. First, we will take a look at the specifications. The GTA 5 is powered by an AMD Ryzen 9 5900 ATX processor, Radeon RX graphics GPU. There's also 32GB dual channel memory and 500GB NVMe drive in my unit. The packaging of the GTA 5 looks quite cool. The dragon on the front of the box demonstrates that there's a powerful device packed inside. Besides the GTA 5 mini PC, you will also find a user guide, a pretty bulky power adapter, two HDMI cables, a mounting bracket, and some screws. Beating has finally outdone itself. The GTA 5 is one of the best looking mini PCs out there. It kind of reminds me of the ACR 3, which was released several months ago. But this one clearly has a larger footprint. The top side of the case is perforated. You can even see the two fans underneath. Of course, there's a beating logo in the center, but you can also see the AMD branding and the let's start catchphrase. On the right corner, you can also find a fingerprint scanner, which is rarely seen on this type of products. On the front side of the device, you will find two microphones, a power button, a clear CMOS button, a USB 3 port, a Type-C port, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the back side of the computer, you will find a DC in port, two RJ45 Ethernet jacks, an HDMI port, a display port, two USB 3 ports, and two USB 2 ports. The GTR 5's connectivity doesn't just stop here. After removing the four screws on the bottom side, you can easily get access to the internals. As small as the GTR 5 is, there's still some room for expansion. We have two DDR4 memory slots, two M2 slots for 2280 hard drives, an M2 slot for 2230 Wi-Fi module, as well as a connector for a 2.5 inch hard drive. The GTR 5 weighs only 678 grams, and it's no larger than a palm. Moving it around the house would be quite easy. The power button and AMD branding will light up after you boot up the device. But these are regular LED lighting rather than RGB lighting, so you won't be able to change the color or anything. The fingerprint scanner is also a power button. You can press it to wake up or boot the GTA 5. Because the scanner is relatively large, setting up the fingerprint is very easy. The recognition rate is also quite high. I've never had any failed attempts in one month. The GTR 5 ships with licensed Windows 11 Pro, and it's a completely clean system. There are no third-party applications or bloatware of any kind, and that's very welcomed. At the very core of the GTR 5 is an AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX processor, which is a beast. It has 8 cores, 16 threads. All of them have a base clock of 3.3 GHz. I can also turbo up to 4.6 GHz. There's also 32GB memory, which is dual channel. The GPU here is the AMD Radeon Graphics, which is clocked at 2100MHz. The GTR 5 also sports a 500GB NVMe drive. In order to test the performance, I've run a few benchmarks and also chosen several high-end mini PCs for comparison. In the Cinebench release 20 CPU crunching test, the GTR 5 scored over 4,000 points in multi-core. That is 68% higher than the Intel Lock 11 Pro. In release 23, the GTR 5 scored more than 12,000 points. Not only did it beat all the Windows-based small computers, but it also gave the Apple Mac Mini a run for its money. The GTR 5 also did well in the cross-platform Geekbench 5 test, as it beat the Apple Mac Mini again. The PC Mark 10 simulates real-world business workflows, and the GTR 5 scored 6345 points in the standard PC Mark 10 test, well ahead of the Intel Lock 11 Pro. The AMD Radeon graphics is one of the best integrated graphics that's included in the SoC, and it showed in the 3D Mark tests. The NVMe drive in the GTR 5 is not the fastest we've seen, but it's still much faster than SATA 3 solid snake drives. Numbers in the AACSD benchmark and the Crystal Dismark tell the story. 
Because this computer has dual channel memory, numbers in the i.64 KCAM memory benchmark and GP GPU benchmark all look quite good. In my everyday use, the GTR5 doesn't skip a bit. From web browsing to social networking to productivity workflows, everything is extremely fast. This computer could also take care of all my creative projects. It's consistently fast, rendering complex 3D images in Photoshop or editing 4K videos in PowerDirector. The reading graphics is capable of decoding many different formats of 4K and 8K videos. And the GTR5 also has no problem streaming 8K YouTube videos in Chrome. No computer this size is particularly designed for gaming, yet you guys ask me about gaming all the time. Lighter games such as League of Legends were smooth in both 1080p and 4K. The average frame rate under 1080p and medium settings could reach 162 frames per second. Even when I switched to 4K and high settings, it still stayed above 70 frames per second all the time. In Genshin Impact, 1080p and medium settings the average frame rate was 47 frames per second. Spellbreak, 1080p and medium settings, it stayed at 60 frames per second the entire time. The GTR5 did struggle a little bit with some of the most demanding titles such as Conqueror's Blade. The average frame rate of this game in 1080p and medium settings is only 32 frames per second. It is still generally smooth, but you probably need more to really enjoy the game. These were all the games that I've played on the GTR 5. This system is also quite stable. In the 3D Mark Time Spy Stress Test, it scored 99.9%, .9%, which is the highest number on any MIDI PC I have ever seen. With such a beefy processor inside, the GTR 5 is not technically a low power system, but it's actually quite power efficient, especially when it's idle or under 9 nodes. But when you stress the CPU to the extreme, the power consumption can go over 70 watts. The GTR5 supports the latest Wi-Fi 6E technology, also known as Wi-Fi 6 Extended. It allows the PC to use the 6GHz band, which in return brings more bandwidth, faster speed, and no latency. You can also choose to take advantage of the two Ethernet jacks, especially when you need a soft router. Both of these two RJ45 ports can reach the top speed of 2.5GB per second. The HDMI port and display port on the back, as well as the Type-C port on the front, all support video output up to 4K 60Hz, which means you can connect the GTR5 to as many as three displays at the same time. This can be very helpful if you have some complex productivity tasks at hand. The Beelink GTR5 is a powerhouse in a tiny package. It has a beefy processor, quite a number of inputs and outputs, and offers superb networking. It's undoubtedly one of the best MIDI PCs in the market right now. However, it's not cheap. It will cost you $799 US dollars to get a unit with 32GB memory and 500GB NVMe drive. In the same price range, you can find the Apple M1 powered Mac Mini or a complete Intel Lac 11 Pro system with memory, storage, and OS. The GTR5 is obviously more powerful and more feature packed than the other two. But you can't overlook Apple and Intel's brand power. Also, both the Mac Mini and Mac 11 Pro feature the more versatile Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is essential if you want to connect your MIDI PC to external GPU. If size doesn't matter, a large DIY system of similar performance can save you quite a fortune. But if you want the tiniest computer possible for all the computing you might need, the GTR5 might just be your best bet. Okay, that's all for today's review. If you have more questions, please leave a message in the comment section below. I will try my best to answer all of them. Like always, I will see you in the next video. Peace out.